anthropogenesis in the blood. It is against the thrombin system. Antithrombin 3 is a thrombin cutter. It destroys some of the activated coagulation factor. This protein is normally present in us. It is a very small molecular weight, weight protein. So it, it is lost into urine. And when this protein is lost into urine for a long time, blood is losing anticoagulant proteins. So blood will become procoagulant. So patient will develop thrombosis more readily. Am I clear? Right? So many of the patients with, uh, with nephrotic syndrome develop thrombosis in the veins, especially renal vein thrombosis. So these patients have thrombotic tendency. One of the reasons for thrombotic tendency, only one reason is, there are multiple reasons of thrombogenesis, but one reason in these patients of thrombogenesis is loss of anticoagulant proteins into urine. And then there are more reasons. What are the reasons that these patients undergo repeated thrombo thrombus formation? Number one is loss of anti-thrombin-3 or other anticoagulant proteins. Number two may be due to hyperlipidemia, hyperlipidemia, lipid incorporate and disturb the platelet membrane. And you know when platelet membranes are disturbed, they love to stick to each other. So thrombogenesis. Then high lipids also disturb the membrane of endothelium. When endothelial membranes are disturbed, that also becomes thrombogenic. And then of course, highly concentrated blood, hemoconcentration. Blood flow is fast or slow through the veins? Stasis. Stasis. Further adding to thrombogenesis. So there are multiple reasons why these patients develop a tendency for thrombogenesis. And story does not end up there. Some very important, some more very important proteins also leak down. What are those? Maybe some of the immunoglobulins. But more importantly, low molecular weight complements are lost into urine. And if low molecular weight complement proteins are lost into urine, do you think if patient has less complement factors in the blood, patient can fight with the infection effectively? No, because antibodies with complement are the real fighting machine against many bacteria. So these patients have low chances of infection or high chances of infection? High chances of, high chances of infection. Many of them die due to infections. Right? Maybe nephrotic syndrome does not kill, but complications of nephrotic syndrome kill. For example, when complements are lost into urine, patient's immune system is disturbed and weak, these patients specially develop pneumococcal infection because we need complements to kill the pneumococci because they are capsulated and we need C3B as option N if you have studied the complement system. You know there is something called C3B that help the bacteria to stick with the neutrophil and macrophage and facilitate the phagocytosis of bacteria. Those things are lost. Right? So patient has increased thrombotic tendency, patient has increased tendency for infections, is that right? And another thing, usually these patients have frothy urine. Why their urine is frothy? Low, high protein level. Proteins in the urine make the urine frothy. Is that right? What about the nephrotic syndrome? Do you have any question up to this? Let's go to now patient number four and do a little more injury. Is that right? And see what happened. You already know our patient number one, he had non-selective protein, selective protein urea, albumin urea. Next patient had non-selective protein urea but less than nephrotic range. Third patient has heavy protein urea of the nephrotic range. Let's come to the next patient. In this patient, suppose this is your circulatory system. This is his renal system. In this patient, patient number 4, let's suppose there is more severe injury, plus 4. It is so severe injury that inflammatory lesions, severe inflammatory lesions develop in glomeruli. Glomeruli become loaded with neutrophils. They become loaded with 
macrophages and severe inflammatory lesions form in glomeruli. Just you have a question. Yes, uh, but regarding the, the subnephrotic range, why only low molecular proteins will be lost in the nephrotic range instead of uh, non-selective? No, this will be also non-selective. Correct, but on um, stage two. Secondly, listen, listen. Actually, some nephrotic patients have only albumin loss and some nephrotic patients have both losses. Right? It depends on. If damage is just increased number of pores but not the size of the pores, you develop, you develop albuminuria. And if it is so many pores that total albumin loss is more than 3.5 grams, nephrotic will come. But another nephrotic in which not only increased number of pores is there, but there is increased number of uh, increased size of pores. So he will develop non-selective protein urea. Am I clear? Yes. So listen, this concept that selective protein urea, it does not tell nephrotic will be there or not. Selective protein urea only tell that there are some excessive small pores and albumin is coming. But if albumin is less than 3.5 gram, subnephrotic. If it to albumin in the urine is more than 3.5 grams, this is nephrotic. Now listen another patient. He has few extra pores but they are very large. So he has albumin and globulin. So we say non-selective protein urea but less than nephrotic. But the same pores become more non-selective protein urea into nephrotic. Is that right? So nephrotic syndrome patient has just heavy protein urea. It may be selective, it may be non-selective. Later on in the lecture I will tell you when nephrotic syndrome is due to minimal change glomerulopathy, it is selective protein urea. And when nephrotic syndrome is due to membranoproliferative disease, it becomes non-selective. Because in minimal change glomerulopathy, there are some cytokines which just neutralize the charges, negative charges. Pore size is not increased. So when all the glomerular basement membrane negative charge disappear, heavy albumin start leaking because that is no more repelled. Because normal size of the pores, normal size of the pore should allow the albumin. But normally albumin does not go down due to repulsion by the charges. So minimal chain disease pathology, just there are some cytokines and some biochemical substances which neutralize all the negative charges in 2.5 million glomerular basement membranes. And everywhere, heavy albumin loses. But when I tell you another disease like focal segmental glomerulonephritis, I will teach you later, don't be confused. Or membranous glomerulopathy or uh, membranoproliferative glomerulopathy, then big pores are formed. Not only pore number is increased, but size is also increased. So you will have nephrotic with non-selective protein urea. Am I really clear to you people or teaching myself? You are understanding something. Okay, you are looking angry. You understand it? Okay. Now, now listen. No, some people after my lecture become angry. Most of them become happy. They become angry. They say, why we did not understand before? And I never ask, they are angry with whom? With themselves or with someone else? Anyway, let's come back. This is the next patient. Here I say, there are truly very severe injury to the glomerulus. There are severe inflammatory reactions going on in glomeruli. And even glomerular membranes somewhere having big holes. This time, of course, albumin will come down, isn't it? With that, globulin will also come down. Am I right? Every type of plasma.